So uh, before starting the topic for today, uh, there was a correction that was made yesterday, and I told you I, I taught you state controllability and out controllability and observability as well. So the correction was in the output controllability. We observed this matrix, and uh, in order for this the system to be output controllable, we saw uh, we said that yesterday. Uh, QC which was represented by this matrix should have a rank of N. So this was the correction. It shouldn't have rank of N rather it should have a rank of M Where M is the number of output in the system and that is why if we observe the example that we did yesterday And when we found the output controllability So in this case we observed QC was coming out to have a rank of 1 and since the output also have uh, is of the order 1 and thus since the rank of QC is 1 and thus it is completely output controllable. This is the correction that uh, was supposed to be inculcated today. And our next topic for today is the forms of state variable which uh, is the last topic uh, also called as canonical form. So while obtaining state space representation we noted that there are uh, there are alternative sets of state variables that can be possible. So we saw this when we tried to obtain, we, we did a question where we saw that could be four state variables or three state variables. So that depends upon what type of approach are you going to apply. So since different sets of state variables are possible in any example in any system and therefore this gives a rise to uh, possible forms of many possible forms of SFG. So the, this depends upon how many uh, alternate sets of state variables are possible and thus you will be having different types or different forms of or different models of SFG and state space. And these are broadly or basically called as canonical form and the basic four, they are four types of canonical form. So these basic four types of uh, canonical forms are termed as phase variable canonical form. The second is input feed forward canonical form. The third is diagonal canonical form. And the fourth is Jordan canonical form. So we'll try to uh, just have a glimpse of each of these four canonical forms. And just for the knowledge that how many types of state variable exist. And it's not that uh, one of them is the best representation, but you, uh, there is it's one of the representation which is easier than other and we already studied it so i'll be giving definition for for, for the four type of representation canonical forms so first is phase variable canonical form so it's a canonical form that describes uh, this which is described by n feedback involving the n coefficients of the n at order denominator polynomial of the transfer function and m feed forward involving the bm coefficients of the m at order numerator polynomial of the transfer function so this was already the example had already been done where we studied about conversion of transfer function into state model which was having numerator uh, which which was uh, having polynomial in the numerator as well so that type of form is called as phase variable form in case of input, input feed forward canonical form so this this is described by n feed forward loops involving the a n coefficients of the nth order denominator polynomial of the transfer function so similar to the previous one and the difference from the previous is it will be having feed forward loops obtained by feeding forward the input signal so in this type of canonical form you'll be having paths that will be originating from the input u and will be uh, terminating at the different state variables. So this is a slight difference from the phase variable canonical form. So in case of phase variable canonical form, you all, you were having one signal that uh, initiated from the input u. And in case of input feed forward canonical form, you, you will be having multiple uh, signals or multiple paths which will be originating from the input u. Again, Jordan canonical form comprises of a, a block diagonal canonical form for system that do not possess distinct system poles. So this is possible if you are going to have uh, distinct system poles. For example, if I say the transfer function is represented by an expression 
1 upon s plus 1, s plus 2, s plus 5. So these are term-based distinct system pools. So this is a term called as poles for the time being because I will be discussing about poles in unit 3. So for the time being poles are nothing but the values of s in the transfer function which causes the transfer function to go to infinity. So all those values of h which, which will cause the transfer function have a value infinity are termed as poles. For example, if you are going to substitute here s equal to minus 1. So this will make transfer function infinity and hence this qualifies as a pole. Likewise, if you substitute s equal to minus 2, this will, this will also make transfer function infinity. And again, minus 5 will make the transfer function infinity. And thus these three qualifies as poles of the transfer function. So if you in case are going to have distinct uh, system with distinct poles like this, then this can be represented into Jordan canonical form and it can be done by taking the partial fraction of each terms and you'll be having uh, parallel three parallel paths. So I'm not going to detail of this. And if anyone of you is interested, you can look into the books. So you'll be having in this type of state model, you'll be having parallel paths depending upon what type, what order of S is given in the denominator. So if you have three denominator, three or third order denominator polynomial or third order system, in that, in this case, you'll be having three paths that will be in parallel in the state model. Then the fourth type of uh, canonical form is the diagonal form. So it's a decoupled uh, canonical form displaying the n distinct system poles on the diagonal of the state variables representation A matrix. So in this type of form, you will be having uh, when you obtain the state variable representation, then in, in matrix A, you will be having only the diagonal elements, while the off diagonal elements will be zero. So in such type of system, you will be uh, having a relation. There will, there will not exist any relation between different state variables. Uh, for example, if you have three state variables, x1, x2, x3, so they will not be connected because of the off diagonal element which is zero. So this uh, finishes unit two and in the next class we'll be talking about unit three. So if you have any problem related to lecture taken today or any lecture that was taken previously, you can ask me.